Sirens and later mermaids are mythical figures that invite to pleasure and use music and female sex appeal to seduce. On one hand, these traits of being delectable and dangerous have been maintained throughout history, and on the other hand, the physical appearance of these characters has changed a lot over the centuries since the time of Homer. The word siren comes from the Greek seira, which means to tie with rope. Sirens tie you up with their songs and beauty. In the Odyssey, when Odysseus was preparing to leave the island of the sorceress Circe, the latter told him of a way to outwit the dangerous creatures, to use big wax to pluck his men's ears and tie him to the mast. He ordered his men to leave him tied tightly to the mast, no matter how much he might beg. When he heard the beautiful song of the sirens, he ordered the sailors to untie him, but they bound him tighter. When they had passed out of earshot, he was released, successfully beating the sirens. This episode has been portrayed multiple times. The oldest surviving artistic depiction is in this Corinthian Arribalos, a small flask with a narrow neck from around 560 BC. There is a ship with oarmen and Odysseus tied to the mast. There are also three winged sirens, creatures with women's heads and birds' bodies on a rock in the middle of the sea. The potter felt a horror vacui, so he filled the blank spaces with a square and two sinister birds, as he wanted to emphasize the horrible death that comes if you approach the sirens. This other depiction is from classical times, 480 BC. It is a stamnos, a type of Greek pottery used to store liquids. Here we have Odysseus and his men passing by the rock where there are three sirens singing. Another representation that is a bit later, from around 400 BC, is this one. In this case, the sirens have musical instruments. One has a lyre and another some kind of tambourine. The latter also carries a mirror, element that will appear in many more images of sirens and that symbolizes vanity. There is also this image from a funerary amphora with three sirens, a siren playing the lyre and another playing the lute. Homer only mentions two sirens in the Odyssey. Sirens were also present in a sculpture, the oldest example we have is this bronze figurine of a woman with bird features. This was likely a funerary figurine, as sirens were associated with death and the afterlife. Here is another siren from the 5th century BC, with a chord instrument. It has a sad aspect. As we have seen, there is a close relation between sirens and death. In this picture of an Etruscan sarcophagus, we can appreciate three sirens playing musical instruments before Odysseus' ship. Sirens here don't have wings, proving that different images of sirens coexisted in antiquity. In Pompeii, this first century wall painting of Odysseus and the sirens was found in the 19th century. This is a mosaic from the 2nd century found in Tunisia. Now we are going to jump to the Middle Ages. During this time, the old pagan gods were abandoned in favor of Christianity. Old Greek and Roman myths were reinterpreted under the light of the Christian faith. The Church Fathers read this episode as a symbol of temptation. Odysseus is resisting the charms of silence as Christians have to resist sinful temptations. For medieval thinkers, the siren songs weren't their most important appeal, but their sexual nature was what really attracted men. During this time, Greco-Roman sirens transformed into half-women, half-fish creatures, mermaids. The English word mermaid is not very old, with the earliest attestation in Middle English in Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, around 1390. The compound word is formed from mer, sea, 
and made. The silence of ancient Greek mythology became conflated with mermaids during the medieval period. Some European Romance languages still use cognate terms for siren to denote the mermaid. For example, the French sirene and Spanish and Italian sirena. In the early Greek period, sirens were conceived as woman-headed birds. In medieval time, they had fish tails. For some time, they had two tails in medieval manuscripts. We don't know why, perhaps it is because women have two legs. In medieval columns, capitals, mermaids with double tails appeared. These double tails is due to artistic reasons. Sometimes they appear in columns capitals in a certain angle where they have each tail at each side. The most current example of this is in the icon of a Starbucks coffee chain. A woman with long hair, a crown and two tails. After the Middle Ages, there was a radical change in how sirens mermaids were interpreted. This was evident in the 18th century and Romanticism. Mermaids and sirens are not just charming due to their song, but also their eroticism. Their beautiful bodies is as attractive as their beautiful voices and songs. This is a great painting by French artist Léon Belly. Here sirens are normal-looking women, totally naked, that aggressively try to climb to Odysseus' ship. This other painting is from the Romantic period, around 1850. It is a mermaid combing her hair. She has a big seashell next to her, that could work as a kind of mirror. She has a magnificent tail and a slim, sensual upper part. The background is a cliff that reminds the viewer of the island of Capri. The image of the mermaid has changed. Romantics saw in mermaids seductive women that are fatal. Writers mix sirens with ondines. Waterhouse painted many mermaids, but this one could perfectly illustrate the short story The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. There is a statue of the character in Copenhagen Harbor. In Andersen's story, the mermaid is the one who falls in love with a prince, and so she wants to become a human being. The fairy tale has a sad ending. This is another painting by Waterhouse of Odysseus' encounter with Sirens. Here they have an image like the one they had in ancient times. In this painting, the Sirens are aggressive. They approach the ship and try to assault it. This was not the case in the Homeric poem where sirens are perched on a rock singing. They don't try to jump over to the sailing ships. Herbert Draper, in 1909, painted a similar scene where sirens have human forms and mermaid forms. Sirens have become femme fatales, great beauties but very aggressive too. Here we have another image by Burne Jones, another pre-Raphaelite. The mermaid is with fishes, she has a long hair, nice breasts, a fascinating and dangerous beauty that attracts sailors. This is also reflected in a more mundane way in tavern and pub signs where the mermaid image invites people to come in after a long day of work just to relax and enjoy a drink. The 19th century added eroticism to the mermaids, something that was totally alien to Greek sirens. In this Burne Jones oil painting, we can observe a young man swimming towards her, in love with the beautiful mythical figure, totally seduced by her charming appearance and voice. This is a painting by French symbolist artist Gustave Moreau. The ship is not a Greek one, it is more modern, but what really matters here is what the ship symbolizes, as the three sirens call it in vain. Fermin Girard, painted these wingless sirens playing musical instrument and there is a certain air of melancholy in the painting, considering their futile attempts to attract Odysseus' ship. This bronze sculpture is at the Met, unknown author, a mermaid with two tails. This evokes the image of the emblematic mermaid of the Colonna family, one of the two most powerful feudal clans in medieval and Renaissance Rome. Even its large size, this bronze example may originally have been made for the Colonna Palace in Rome. We have this comic drawing by Bernard Buffet 
almost like a cartoon of Greek sirens screaming and some human remains on their island. It is a bit curious how the modern world has reinterpreted the sirens and mermaids. Romantics portrayed them as beautiful, melancholic creatures that attract with their voices and appearances. Then we have the modern turn, like this 1977 image by Romer Verdun. Odysseus is tied to the mast and the sirens are singing on the beach. They look like they were in a nudist beach, waiting to have a party with the sailors. This is a shocking image when we compare it with previous depictions of gloom and death in antiquity. This is a tavern sign in Amsterdam, a typical modern mermaid with her comb and mirror. When there are no sailors sailing nearby, mermaids doll up, becoming symbols of vain femininity. The sirens and mermaids have been part of literary works other than Homer's. The Czech writer Franz Kafka wrote a short story titled The Silence of the Sirens. The story reanalyzes the encounter between Odysseus and the deathly sirens. In Kafka's version, however, Odysseus puts wax in his own ears and is then tied to the mast. Kafka's telling asserts that the sirens' silence is an even more deadly weapon than their song, and further states that the sirens fell silent when they saw the expression of the innocent elation on Odysseus' face. Yet because Odysseus' stratagem involved stomping his ears to block out their singing, Odysseus didn't realize that the sirens were silent. Finally, Kafka mentions an additional possibility that has been handed down, that Odysseus knew the sirens were not singing, but pretended not to notice it in order to protect himself from divine wrath over his victory. But Kafka admits that the human understanding is beyond its depths on this issue. Modern poetry has also talked about sirens. Many poets like T.S. Eliot have a kind of nostalgia for sirens and ancient times. As we learned in this video, sirens started as demonic, deadly figures associated with death. As the centuries passed, they changed their shape but kept their appeals to finally end up as shadows of what they were. Romantics infused them with a new spirit of love and eroticism in stories of mermaids with unrequited love that end tragically. For modern poets, sirens are the lost voices of the past. The siren has traveled through history, first with wings and after that with a fish tail, becoming a mermaid, and she is still alive in popular imagination, for example in Walt Disney's 1989 film The Little Mermaid, which is a children's movie, and so the protagonist, Ariel, is the only mermaid that wears a bra something that goes against traditional imagery as part of the mermaid's charm, at least since the Middle Ages, is their beautiful white nakedness in the middle of the blue sea. In ancient times, their appeal was their singing voices and flattering speeches. Times changed, but the charm of sirens and mermaids has remained.